Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the Starship webinar. Today, we're going to take a look at Dynamics GP and LTL shipping, like how you can supercharge your LTL shipping process. It's a little bit about uh, V Technologies here first before we get into the uh, PowerPoint and demo. Company founded in the late 80s. Uh, we've uh, been supporting GPs since the early 90s, going back to uh, Great Plains DOS and on up through uh, the latest uh, version of Dynamics GP. Um, we also have uh, in the pipeline Dynamics 365 Business Central, the former NAV, uh, coming up in an upcoming release. So stay tuned for that. The uh, company currently has a uh, an existing customer base of around 10,000 customers. A little bit about Starship and the GP interface. Um, offers a plug and play integration with uh, Dynamics GP for both small package and LTL shipping. Uh, today we're looking at the uh, LTL functionality. <laughs> what that can do is uh, help you automatically update GP with uh, the bill of lading information and the pro numbers, uh, basically the tracking for your freight shipments. Uh, there are some fulfillment options with uh, Starship as well. Uh, there's some light fulfillment in Starship, uh, able to move uh, quantities of product uh, back onto the order if you don't ha have them in stock and you're short shipping, or in conjunction with the warehouse management solution. You have uh, default integrations with uh, Panatrack and High Jumps Collect for GP products. Uh, so you can expand the integration there to have a full pick pack solution on handheld devices. Uh, sales order quoting with uh, Starship, you have the ability to have a single view of all of your carriers side by side, so you can make an educated decision, and you have the ability to call that uh, up from the sales order processing screen or independent of that from a browser window. There's also an API uh, if you want to embed a web service inside of your workflow in CRM, order entry, your shopping cart, uh, you can call the rate shopping functionality from really any place in your workflow. Starship also offers EDI integration, so you have the ability to print your 128 compliance labels for all of your various trading partners, uh, process the uh, ASN information through Starship, and hand off that data to a lot of the, uh, the leading EDI solutions in the GP space, such as SPS Commerce, True Commerce, and Data Masons. So here's why we're uh, gathering today to take a look at the uh, LTL functionality within Starship. I may recognize a number of uh, carriers here on the screen. Uh, we've started building out the LTL functionality about uh, 10, 11 years ago, and over time we've continued to add to that list. Uh, we also have a number of uh, third-party logistics companies that we're integrated with as well. We've partnered with Worldwide Express and their sister company Unishippers as well as uh, Freight Quote and their parent company CH Robinson. There's also some TMS options available for hosting rates for carriers. So if there's carriers that you're currently using for LTL that you don't see on the screen here, uh, there are other options. We also have just the basic bill of lading option as well for LTL. Uh, so feel free to uh, contact me or your customer account manager and we can explore uh, how we can help you with the, uh, the LTL shipping process. And with that, we're going to jump into the product demo. All right, so this is the uh, Starship web client. Uh, if you're not familiar with this just yet, uh, can run in parallel with uh, the desktop application. You can run both of these together. Uh, there's also uh, Starship Cloud, which has uh, recently become available as a controlled release. So if you're interested in either upgrading to the web client or interested in our new cloud solution, uh, feel free to contact us and we'd be happy to have that discussion with you. Uh, just quickly on the user interface here, instead of having uh, the uh, look up for the GP orders tethered to the left hand side of the screen and then all the shipping information on tabs. Uh, you start out in this first view here where you're able to do some order management. Uh, you have still, still have the ability to uh, key in or uh, scan in the document number coming out of GP in order to select the transaction. You can also multi-select here as well. Uh, here you also have some filters that you can uh, narrow down that view so you have all of your pending transactions here. I've uh, narrow down the view based on the customer and a specific batch. So you can add your filters here and you can look at you know, certain batches, any of the uh, order information that we're getting at, customer ID, 
uh, a date range or a specific date you're looking for, PO number, a certain type of document, maybe you're just looking for your RMAs or any of the address fields, ship method, any number of ways to uh, sort through that data. But the traditional method of just uh, entering or scanning in an order is still supported. You can do that here, or you can select orders here from the list of transactions. So any orders that have quantities available to ship against, you can select those orders here and we'll get started with that shipping process. If you've created a ship method in GP for your LTL carriers, Starship will uh, do a value translation on that. We'll read that in. Uh, we could also accept keywords if you wanted to use that to trigger the rate shopping, or uh, we have ship via rules that can make that selection for you if you want to take that decision out of the hands of the operator. Uh, the user does have the ability to come in here and select a carrier. So, um, you have the ability to pick from any, any number of carriers that you have set up on your system here for LTL. So you can toggle between carriers and services there. Uh, we also introduced this new packing assistant. You can have a preference set where it takes you directly to the packaging um, as soon as you enter into Starship. This is similar to the shipping assistant that was on uh, the older desktop application. So you have all of your items and boxes and boxes that go on pallets here and you can drill down into those you can also set up uh, packaging scenarios to have case packs created around a certain quantity of product uh, you can you know pack these out individually here if you're using the gp advanced module you can hook that into some packaging tables and a wms you also have the ability to do aggregate packaging so if you don't really care about the item to box uh, distribution between uh, your, your products. You have the ability to just uh, put in the total quantity of handling units and boxes here. And Starship would reflect that on the bill of lading. Uh, you have preferences on your bill of lading as well as how, how that information is displayed. Uh, once we process the shipment here, I'll take you into that setup. So we got everything packed up, we're ready to go at this point if we want to assign a carrier. Um, you know, as I said, we have those ship via rules, rate shopping rules that can be um set up and add that logic to your your carrier selection by default we'll look at the ship method and bring over the appropriate carrier and service level or you have the ability to rate shop here whether that's from order entry or at the point that you're ready to start shipping uh, you have all of the carrier charges here side by side so you can look at your cost as well as uh, the amount that you would pass on to the uh, invoice on the customer side with any kind of handling fees or markups, any discounts you want to apply with your freight rules. You can also sort here by transit time. And if you have a date and time when the goods need to be there by, you can also enter that in and Starship will automatically uh, filter out any of those services that can't make that transit time. So we'll go ahead and pick one of our carriers here and we'll process the shipment. We have the shipping process icon here or you have your keyboard shortcuts up here in the menu. When I ship and process, that will uh, automatically tender the shipment to the carrier. So if they have capacity to pick up the truck, we'll get back a confirmation, print out our package and pallet labels, our bill of lading, and we'll go ahead and push all that information back into GP. So let's take a look at that first, and then we'll come back to Starship and look at some of the configuration around LTL. So the same sort of write back will occur with your freight. Uh, you do have the option of some different types of notes. So in your write back setup, you have both parcel and freight write back uh, that you can configure here. We give you some basic information out of the box, but this is uh, highly customizable. So you can change the sequence as well as the tags next to each string of data here. It'll basically tell you the uh, bill of lading number. We can assign that automatically or that's a mappable field. Uh, when it went out, when you can expect the product to be delivered by, the carrier or the SCAT code that was used, the billing preference, however it was sent out, third party or collect as well, and then your piece counts with the pro number here. We'll also update that information over to the tracking table, same as parcel. And we also have some user-defined field left populated here, just a shipped confirmation as well as the um, the cost, so I've plugged that into one of my user-defined fields. You can do that in the custom write-back section. So I can capture my exposure on the freight, 
as well as the marked up amount here. So if we want to run a smart list, do a little bit of analysis on what our freight spend and our profit loss margin is, you can do that right here within GT. Batch ID, we've updated that, so we've tagged batch. Uh, you do have the option of changing the ship method as well. So we can write that back with the custom right back. If you want to rate shop and then pick a different carrier, we can tag it with the specific service level that was used in GP. Uh, beyond the out of the box integration that you're, you have currently with GP, uh, you also have the SQL extension as options to read and write data to other sources. So if you're leveraging things like GT's extender tables, or other applications like SalesPad, CRM, uh, service database. Uh, we have the ability to pull data out of there and then also write uh, individual strings of data to specific fields. So we can do that with a query um, or we could also be contracted to write the SQL for you or you have access to those tools within Starship as well. Take a look back in Starship at some of the uh, LTL configuration. You do have both package and pallet labels. Um, these can also be um, you know, printed to a thermal label. For the purposes of demonstration, I have that set to render to PDF. Um, some of the other documents you can get out of the box with Starship. Of course, all the carriers that uh, we offer integration to, we do have uh, templates with, uh, with their format. Uh, the, the Starship templates give you the ability to do a little more customization. So if you're familiar with the template designer, uh, you have the ability to modify any of these stock forms with any of your um, logos or uh, custom formatting changes that you'd like to make. Uh, built into Starship, you have the, uh, the standard straight bill of lading here, which can be modified. Uh, you also have the VIX bill of lading. And then if you're doing more uh, truckload or multi-stop type shipments, so there's a master bill of lading here, and that could include multiple sales transactions on the same shipment various handling units and different products coming from several different orders coming out of GP. All those can be modified. Uh, there's also the hazmat bill of lading, uh, packing list. You have, of course, the standard shipment level packing list. You also have the uh, kind of hybrid forms here where you can get the packing list and the shipping labels together. A couple different formats there. Um, there's also the um, standard packing list that you can do on a thermal label. So you can get those collated and printed in the same sequence as your, your package or pallet label and then a packing list right on a thermal label. But you can put that on the outside of the box or with the pallet. We'll take a look at the template designer. Uh, if you are familiar with this, you have the ability to come into Starship and modify the contents of uh, any of those standard documents here. For a comparison, here's what's underneath that form. Take a look at our bill of lading so you can do a side-by-side -side comparison here. So here's all of the, the data that prints out on the finished paper. And then this is what's underneath. So you have X, Y coordinates on the page with the ability to add any additional fields or formatting changes that you'd like to. You have uh, graphics here. You can draw on the page uh, barcodes of any data that we have. Um, bands of text where you have columns of data that line up here, individual fields or blocks of text. So you can take any of the information that's here, wipe that out and uh, free up some space or add your own verbiage. Any of the fields of data we have here, um, you can easily redirect that to another field. And these are in different categories. Uh, so you just have to navigate to the type of information that you're looking for. You have line item fields here, is all your various item fields. So Starship's looking at its own data to populate these forms. It's not looking at the GP database, but we can map that data in through the integration and all those fields are populated by GP. We can go ahead and uh, print out any of that information on the documents that you may require. Uh, Starship also offers a document customization service. So if you have any requirements for um, bills of lading, packing lists, any other uh, special trading partner documents, 128 labels, uh, we have services available to assist you with that if you don't wanna take on uh, building these out yourself. Right quick, I just wanted to show you here the uh, eNotify uh, integration. You do have the option of sending out custom emails for your LTL shipments as well. So you may be leveraging the uh, UPS Quantum View or FedEx ShipAlert services for your parcel shipments. 
Uh, Starship does have this e-notify module built in where you can design your own custom email templates, send that out through your own POP account or SMTP server. Nice thing here with the email notifications for freight is you can serve up the pro number to the customer, same way you're doing for your parcel tracking. Uh, you can grab documents from an external directory. Or the really cool thing is being able to grab any of the uh, freight documents that you may be printing. So a copy of a bill of lading, uh, handling, uh, excuse me, uh, packing list rather, um, or any other documents that are generated as part of that uh, freight workflow. Those can be inserted automatically to your email uh, templates, the notification goes out, and your customer can start tracking that right away. So hopefully if you're notifying them proactively about the status of the shipment, that cuts down on the number of customer service calls with your customer looking for the pro number or status on the freight. Um, you do, of course, have that information uh, back in GP as well. Um, there's also a new dashboard with Starship that could give you access to that information for your front office users. Take a look at that quickly here. Uh, this is the, the new dashboard that's available with the web clients. Uh, so even if you're still using desktop client, you can still uh, take advantage of a new dashboard. Uh, we've you know ported over all of the crystal reports here to these newer widgets. We've got that built in here as well to do some analysis on your freight spend over a period of time. Have the new heat map here that will take a look at all of your shipments that are going out. So you can see where the concentration of uh, all of your shipping is uh, across the country. Access to history here. Anybody in the front office can do a lookup on the uh, the freight or rate quotes uh, within Starship here. You can do lookups here by any of the common GP fields or any of the other data that uh, you may want to query on. Grab one of these shipments here. With this is basically a historical view of the shipment. So if there's ever a question on say the freight charges, there's a discrepancy to see how you arrived at that price, you can go back in to Starship and bring up the historical transaction, drill down into that amount here, see any additional freight rules that may have been applied, any handling fees, and see exactly how we arrived at that price. Uh, you also have the uh, shipment status here. So Starship can be set up to do background tracking through the APIs of any of the LTL carriers that we support. Um, I'm just using test bench, so there's no live tracking here. I'll give you a uh, snapshot of what that looks like here. So this would be the status uh, up to the point that it was signed for and delivered uh, for your freight. And that'd be similar to what you saw on the, the client um, or the old dashboard as well. Let's have the ability to reprint documents here, so you don't need to bug anybody out in the warehouse um, about uh, looking up documents um, or having to save those into a folder. Of course, uh, PDF copies can be saved in an external directory, but you have the ability here to go back in the system and reprint any document. Okay, folks, that covers uh, what we had planned to share with you. Thank everybody for joining us today. Again, if you have any follow-up questions on any information that was shared with you today, I'll throw up my contact info here. So you can reach me via email or my extension. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. We really appreciate your time today. Have a great day.